eye. So myopia is basically a refractive error of your eye that causes distance objects to appear blurry while close-up objects remain clear. And it basically occurs when your eyeball is too long or the cornea is curved, causing light rays to focus incorrectly on your retina. And basically, you can kind of think of myopia as basically like having a camera that only focuses on nearby objects and can't focus on faraway objects. And myopia is a really common vision problem that affects all kinds of people of all ages, from children to even adults. And myopia is becoming really prevalent worldwide, particularly in urban areas where there's high level of screen time and limited outdoor activity. And data shows that it's estimated that over one third of the global population will have affected myopia by 2030. And myopia affects daily life. It affects tasks like driving, watching TV, playing sports. And if myopia is left uncorrected, it can increase the risk of other eye conditions like cataracts and even worse, retinal detachments. And those are some of the examples of some of the causes that cause myopia. And while genetics play a really important role in determining who's susceptible to myopia, environmental factors also play a really important role in myopia's development. And especially in children who are still developing, spending excessive time on activities that require close-up vision, like devices, reading, studying, reading textbooks, is often associated with a much higher risk of developing high myopia. And lack of outdoor exposure, especially when you're a child, can really increase the likelihood of developing myopia because experts believe that outdoor activities expose the light to more natural light, aka sunlight, which is thought to have a really protective effect against developing myopia. So maybe lately you've been noticing that things afar have been seeming a bit blurry? You could have myopia. So let's talk a bit about how myopia is actually diagnosed. So myopia is diagnosed through a comprehensive eye examination that's usually conducted by an optometrist. And this examination can involve numerous tests like refraction assessments and other measurements of the eye's length and diameter and curvature. And if you can't go to the doctor, some common symptoms of myopia can be squinting, eye strain, headaches, and children with undiagnosed myopia can exhibit behaviors like sitting really close to the TV or holding books and devices really close to their face while using them. But even if you end up having myopia, there's still treatment options. But one thing to know is that myopia is not reversible, because when myopia occurs, your eyeball starts elongating horizontally. And this can't be reversed, you can't bring your eyeball back to normal shape. But what you can do is slow down and halt the progression of myopia, especially in children who are still developing. And some of these options can be corrective lenses and eyeglasses and special contact lenses, which compensate for this refractive error and just provide a much clearer distance vision. And one of the examples of the approaches taken against myopia is orthokeratology. And this is a technique where a specifically designed rigid contact lens is meant to be worn overnight and it temporarily reshapes the cornea and reduces myopia's progression. And there's also some other types of eye drops and stuff like that, which shown to have some kind of promising effects in slowing down myopia's progression. So usually myopia is pretty common and it's manageable, but it can lead to some pretty bad complications if it's left uncorrected or it progresses really rapidly. And one of these cases are known as high myopia, and it's characterized by a severe degree of nearsightedness. And this increases the risk of eye conditions like retinal detachment and glaucoma. But on the other hand, individuals with high myopia can experience a really reduced quality of life due to visual impairment problems. And they can be limited in daily activities, like they won't be able to see the sun setting, they can't go sightseeing, they might not be able to read signs when they're driving, and this can really be like bad for their life. And one important thing to know, if any kids are watching this, is the widespread use of digital devices like smartphones and tablets are really the main causes of myopia, and they've raised large concerns about their potential impact on the development and the progression of myopia. Extended screen time, especially amongst children in middle school and elementary school, is associated with a higher risk of myopia because you're still developing and your body can easily change, unlike adults. The problem with digital devices is that the more you use, the less time you're spending outdoors, and the more you are in the presence of unnatural forms of light your light bulbs. 
Natural light is essential for the proper development and formation of your eye. And this brings me to prevention strategies. So the preventive measures for myopia are mainly really effective when you're a kid, but still can be pretty effective when you're an adult. But the main thing is that you should encourage yourself to spend more time outdoors in the presence of natural daylight. And this is essential for promoting healthy vision development and reducing the chances of myopia. But at the same time, you should be practicing good habits. You should generally try to stay away from screens. You should practice looking far away. You should also take regular breaks from close work if you have to do close work. And these can all help you reduce eye strain, which will all contribute to the development of myopia. So if you guys really want to make a difference in this growing prevalence of this eye problem, we need to work together as a team. We need to work with healthcare providers, educators, and policymakers to create public health initiatives aimed at promoting eye health awareness. And at the same time, these initiatives should encourage outdoor activities and implement programs that can help identify myopia at a really early age, which will help slow down its progression and getting worse. So right now, a really good myopia program would be school-based interventions. These programs should implement myopia awareness while teaching kids about the harms, dangers, and promoting healthy visual habits that can really reduce the burden of myopia amongst these young students who are the most vulnerable since they're still developing. There should also be an effort to incorporate more ergonomic classroom environments that have boards distance more far away so kids' eyes don't get strained. Right now, in the science industry, ongoing research aims to really understand the underlying mechanisms of myopia and develop much more effective strategies for its prevention. Right now, the main areas of focus are investigating the genetic risk factors, exploring new treatment options, and evaluating the long-term effects of myopia. The current collaborative efforts between researchers, doctors, and industry members are crucial for the development and advancement of this research and creating new scientific progress. That's it for today's episode of the STEM Spotlight. I hope you guys enjoyed, and this is Vignesh signing off.